According to the Associated Press, the Prime Minister of Britain, Boris Johnson, is planning to resign. This ending a political crisis paralyzing Britain's government. Johnson's resignation coming after sexual harassment claims against him and more than 40 of his ministers stepping down. Happening today, locally, Rochester Mayor Malik Evans is scheduled to announce the name of a new, new police chief for the Rochester Police Department at 9.30 this morning. David Smith has served as interim chief since October. He told News 8 in December that he hoped to eventually transition back to deputy chief once a new chief is hired. Cynthia Harriet Sullivan was the previous interim chief. Before her came interim chief Mark Simmons. The department has not had a full chief since Laron Singletary was fired by former Mayor Lovely Warren in the wake of the death of Daniel Prude. Also, city officials will be joining Senator Kirsten Gillibrand this afternoon in Rochester for the Keep Kids Fed Act, pushing for further action to fight children's hunger. Her proposal expands funding for school nutrition programs, makes it easier for children to access free and low-cost meals, and fights food insecurity in low-income neighborhoods. Nearly one in five children here in Monroe County face food insecurity, according to Gillibrand's office. Well, new this morning, a 37-year-old Rochester man is in the hospital for non-life-threatening injuries. Police say the man was shot at least once in the lower body just before 11 last night. Authorities saying the shooting happened on Shelter Street and multiple unoccupied vehicles were also struck by gunfire. Currently, no suspects are in custody. Anyone with information is asked to call 911. A beautiful day uh, planned, James, in terms of the forecast, but yeah. only at 55 right now, so a bit cool. Yeah, a little cool uh, for the morning commute, but maybe your commute is uh, across the state to, to go on vacation, visit friends and family mm -hmm. for an extended weekend. Why not? Uh, we've got some numbers uh, in the lower 80s generally for afternoon high temperatures. Capital region over in Albany, they'll be a touch warmer. Uh, there will go middle 80s, but uh, otherwise, if you're going up to the north country, call it upper 70s. Rain chance, just about zero for the entire region uh, for today. We'll have the eight-day forecast glance of the weekend at the end of the show. Allie? All right, James, thank you. Looking at our sunrise traffic one more time now, no accidents. 394, 95, 90 are clear. We'll keep you updated throughout the morning. A local advocacy group for seniors is awarded federal funding for transportation needs. Lifespan of Greater Rochester plans to use it to improve non-emergency transportation services. Erica DeCoste joining us live in the studio this morning with more on this. Erica, good morning. Good morning. That's right. Lifespan has received over $200,000 from the U.S. Department of Transportation's Federal Transit Administration. They told me the need for those essential transportation services, as you mentioned, has grown over the pandemic. And with this money, they hope to enhance what they already have to offer and expand their reach. Jody Rowe, Chief Operating Officer for Lifespan, says they applied for the grant back in December with the desire to do more. They don't provide the actual transportation itself. They facilitate it with outside parties. Many low-income adults don't have their own transportation or Internet for telehealth. Roe hopes to reach this group more easily, especially those who are further out. In the coming days, they'll also be hiring a manager to oversee three counties. It'll allow transportation across county borders. Um, so right now, a lot of folks that live in Ontario County or Livingston County come to Monroe County for medical care. So we hope to see, you know, not only people coming into Monroe County from the outlying counties, but within Ontario and Livingston, um, enhanced transportation options there too. That's certainly done a lot for seniors over this pandemic. And for those who do have access to internet, they're also planning on making operations smoother for getting appointments, uh, transportation appointments online. Reporting, Erica Cost, News 8. Erica, thank you. And Lifespan says they're always looking for volunteers to help out with driving needs, especially for older adults with disabilities. Well, back home now, a Rochester police officer was hospitalized last night after a crash involving a tow truck. This happened at the intersection of Bay and North Goodman Streets around 5. The crash flipped the tow truck on its side and the officer was taken to the hospital with what we're told are non-life-threatening injuries. The tow truck driver was not hurt. No charges have been filed and the cause of the crash is under investigation. A parolee accused of shooting into a crowd of people gathered outside a Rochester Recreation Center was arraigned yesterday. One person died in that shooting. Three others were injured. 
30-year-old Quinjavis Lewis has been charged with criminal endangerment and criminal possession of a weapon. Police say he was one of multiple people to shoot into the crowd outside the Trenton and Pamela Jackson Arsenal early Tuesday morning. Investigators do not know whether any of the shots allegedly fired by Lewis hit any of the victims. A 14-year-old boy is in the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries after being stabbed in the city of Rochester yesterday just after 6 p.m. Police say a fight broke out between the teen and a group on Fernwood Park near Woodman Park. Police ask any witnesses to call 911 as they continue to investigate. After another mass shooting, this one in Illinois, Congressman Joe Morelli and his Republican opponent in the upcoming election, Leron Singletary, a former Rochester police chief, are outlining their plans for gun control. Morelli says he's renewing his support for a ban on assault weapons, while Singletary says that ban will only penalize law-abiding citizens. The election for the 25th congressional seat will be the first Tuesday in November. In national news, sticking with that 4th of July mass shooting uh, in Illinois that killed seven and injured nearly 40 others, investigators say while in custody, the suspect, Robert Cremo III, admitted to the attack and said he considered another attack when he fled briefly to Wisconsin. He is currently facing seven counts of first degree murder. Cremo was able to legally obtain five firearms despite two previous encounters with police in 2019 involving violence. Well, here's what some people might be talking about at the water cooler this morning. The running of the Bulls Festival is back after a two-year hiatus from the pandemic. Thousands of people gathered on Wednesday with the traditional Chupinazo firework ignited to start the festival in Pampelona, Spain. The highlight of the festival, the early morning bull runs beginning this morning where thousands will scramble trying to avoid six bulls charging along a winding stone route to the city's bull ring. Wow. Yikes. <laughs> that is a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do we have any video of the actual bull running? Uh, I'm sure we'll have more uh, through CBS tomorrow too <laughs> yeah. uh, once some of that takes place. But my goodness, can you imagine I would go running from, away from a bull? Yeah, I'd say I would go there for, maybe for that, for that nice social gathering, maybe not the, the actual bull running. Uh, right. But interesting, yeah, maybe on the bucket list to watch. And I just do. love to go to Spain, though. <laughs> That's true, right. Spain, Portugal, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of uh, really beautiful sights to see there. Uh, a lot of tourist traps, though, and I know you'd like to avoid those. I do like to avoid. I have been to Spain, uh, and my mom's purse was actually stolen within the first 10 minutes we oh got there, so <laughs> we learned our lesson, uh, but, you know, absolutely beautiful place to visit if you haven't been there you and go. have the opportunity to. There you, not, you know, not a great way to start off the vacation, but I'm sure there were plenty of great moments as well. A uh, grilling forecast, hopefully that can be a great moment for you this afternoon. Temperatures get to around 80. Mostly sunny skies today. Uh, we'll go filtered sun for you as we get into Friday and the weekend still is looking good. Uh, Saturday a bit cooler actually. One of the coolest days on the 8th day. Just mid 70s for afternoon highs but uh, gorgeous Sunday. Storms will wait till next week. All right James thank you and thanks so much for watching News 8 at Sunrise. Our next update is coming up in 30 minutes. CBS Mornings is up next.